right. Okay, can you hear me? Yeah. I know I've got a booming voice from here to the end of New Zealand. Um, right, um, it's great to see people who I'm just recognising and have probably forgotten their names, and I'll do that again, but it really is lovely to see so many that I can actually remember from the past. Um, right, WONAC began basically from the Women's Liberation Action Groups, which I wasn't even involved in, hadn't even heard of Women's Liberation, or Germaine Greer, so I was a bit slow to catch up there. But as it agreed with everything, I thought that was fine with me, sort of. Um, and we were established in 1973 as such. But shame on you, Bill Logan. <laughs> <laughs> But anyway, so off we took, but before that, things had really started to hit the fan anyway. And it was so exciting, it really was. And to be called so many sort of things was just even better fun. Sort of. But, um, you know, we were, what, communists, lesbians? I can't, help, can't think what else we were. Oh, mad, murderers, sort of. But seemed to sort of belie the evidence often in front of them, but still, we won't regard that as much of much consequence, except in terms of the general public sentiment in New Zealand, which I've always thought is cringing, what, forelock tugging, sort of respectable English sort of inheritors or something. I really don't know whether the class system is still with us and going to stay with us or be re-established, but there's something really wrong now in, New Ze in the New Zealand political system. Okay, off we went. There were sort of attempts to introduce new laws, um, to roll things back the minute um, Spat became aware of what was going on. You have the establishment of the clinic, a key event, and then it's just wham, wham, close down the clinic, get the doctor into court, etc., etc. And I think we were terribly busy in those times. Um, we were working with other groups, sometimes relationships were strained, but generally we worked very well with them, and you had sort of both the activism and the enormous help received from El Rance, particularly Margaret Sparrow, who's somewhere behind me. Whenever Margaret was called on, um, up she stood, and what's more, she sort of was behind women's choice really from the word go and made her attitude quite clear. So you had Margaret sort of somewhere positioned in El Rance, which often fascinated me, but she really was great. Um, there was the Royal Commission. Then there was the Act, which of course shut down the clinic because they put in an extra little bit, even beyond the Royal Commission's recommendations. That was amended within six months. And we're sort of back to the Woolnough decision and um, the Bourne decision before that, etc., etc. But the Woolnough decision was the critical one. Um, he, of course, had been acquitted after two trials. Um, the movement lost its steam a bit then. There was the repeal petition, which worked very well, but you know, no, nobody ever really entirely knew what repeal meant, which worked well because they got the National Party women up and running, I think, and I think that was incredibly important because it was the National Party that really oversaw the um, implementation of the Act um, and frightened the National Party men. So they were ready to whimper off stage. In fact, they whimpered immediately. They saw the sort of opposition immediately post the um, passage of the bill. Um, then in the 80s, you have the women's movement itself, as Alison explained, starting to fragment, but services hadn't been established, so when it got on with pushing for services, sex education, condom promotion, um, we did a bit of lobbying. I don't know that we were the most successful lobbyists. Um, we got a lot of promises and not much action, um, which was very disappointing, actually. But I think we actually did really annoy Michael Bassett, and I feel quite proud of that. <laughs> and I think it may have done him some harm in the long run, um, because um, in the finals, at some stage, we did our third demonstration outside Parliament, and we'd been lobbying for West Coast services and been told it couldn't be done, and we are told them how to do it, and got a bit sort of short, short with them. You know, so we didn't feel this was our job to do their homework. And suddenly I was told, um, you know, they've got the service, why are you here? And um, I said, well, I didn't know, nobody told us. But it was on the day we did a demo. Now, that, I think, shows that, you know, you can have a hysterical politician say, we never listen to demonstrators, and yet they made that announcement that day. So I thought that was pretty fantastic. 90s, things slowed off again. Um, and again, we went on doing a bit of lobbying, and again, promises were made and no delivery. Um, and I think Margaret, I think, 
story on that is really illuminating that you know they've been promised medical abortion and establishing the services and doing the legal work behind it. And Margaret and Carol and her mates had to set up a company to get that medical pill into New Zealand and I think that's fantastic but an appalling reflection on health <coughs> ministers etc. Um, oh, also in the 80s we looked at Plinia, we had the Kid Bill of course, um, Marilyn Waring headed that off and so did a double standard poster and we won't go there at present. Um, and, um, 90s, less activity, fighting off the um, everlasting belief that teenagers deliberately get pregnant to get on the DPB, because by then, to our shame, we'd had to be corrected ourselves. And I think by the beginning of the 80s, we went out and sent off fact sheets to the media and MPs saying, sorry, the teenage pregnancies of rates have halved. Not gone up since the DPB. I think they were at their lowest about two or three years ago, but I'm not up to date on this. Do you know Kay? Or sort of all in yeah, yeah. Which, you know, is never acknowledged. That's the dreadful thing. Um, and that, a lot of that is due to family planning and other work and simply, you know, a change, far more openness, you know, and groups like Wayne are getting out and talking about it and yelling about it and distributing contraceptive leaflets outside schools. I get to the 2000s. Um, this has been a slowed off period, but we still have this dreadful law on the books. Terrible illusions. Um, Alison pointed out last year in a column that didn't get a lot of coverage, as was in the Bay of Plenty Times, that you know, we, while we were criticising Americans during their election campaign on the rape issue, we don't have rape as a grounds for abortion here. can be taken into consideration only. And, and that's something most of New Zealand doesn't realise. We think we're once again you know, a terribly advanced society. We are not. Um, what else? Um, I think I've just about got up to the present and that's where I'm meant to be and I've got to tell one funny anecdote. So I've thought about this and I don't know who to sort of thought up the idea of helium balloons in Parliament, but it seemed to us that, you know, if you put them under a sort of top, you'd look very pregnant indeed. And so up about, what, 15 went with the balloons under their tops and they got about nine or ten through the doors into the gallery before suddenly, the, whatever you call it, shut into the house or something, thought something's very suspicious about this, but too late. And anyway, you know, so they went in to sort of drag all these pregnant women out again, muttering, you can't expect us to abort, we're not allowed to. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> anyway, then they just lifted their smocks or whatever and the helium balloons floated up to the top of the gallery and there they stayed for quite a while. <laughs> and we did a lot of other things like that. We went and you know, really got into satire by then, you know, instead of being the lunatic fringe, we were the lunatic fringe, you know, fighting back very successfully and pointing out the lunatics weren't us. And I think that's the situation we have reached in the abortion, the pro-choice movement today, that one WONAC, and it does a great deal to the communist groups in America, socialist groups in America, our philosophy, it had to be to criminalisation, nothing else would work, is now accepted and is beginning to accept it more internationally. Um, I'd also like to say thanks to the lesbians who also, also stood on those front lines and just defied people and I thought that was fantastic too. Thank you everybody.